on Get Down to Business, the show all about small business, jobs, and entrepreneurship. And I'm joined uh, on the phone by Chef Laura Frankel, who is a noted chef and the owner of Pickled Tongue Catering and Foods. And uh, most recently, uh, Laura served as the executive chef at Wolfgang Puck Kosher Catering at Spurtis Institute in Chicago. Uh, Laura has written a number of fantastic books and uh, is truly an expert on everything food. But uh, we're going to stretch those limits today and talk about the connection between food and business. Laura, welcome to Get Down to Business. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. So, Laura, let's jump right into it. Uh, Why do business people wine and dine colleagues? Does it really work to close a deal? I think it does. I think business these days... Um, and it has always been done over a handshake, a warm meal, a smile, um, more so than, you know, uh, tapping a keyboard and just pushing send. And um, there's nothing that breaks the, any tension and barriers than a great meal shared together and, you know, all kinds of tensions are released and, and it's just a great way to close a deal or make some new friends. Well. You have watched uh, many uh, business transactions and many uh, community events and organizations, um, all surrounded by food. Uh, and you've probably seen the best of moments uh, mm-hmm. and, and seen uh, many, uh, many names that many of our listeners would recognize enjoying many of your culinary delights. But you've probably also seen some embarrassing moments as well where, uh, where food uh, scenarios may not have gone as smoothly as possible. So maybe a little bit of tips or advice for our listeners when they go out to eat with a business colleague. What are the best things to order and maybe the things to avoid? <laughs> Well, I think when you're when you're dining out, your host kind of sets the pace for the meal, and you should look to that person for what to order. You don't want to be the the person ordering the most expensive steak on the menu when your boss just came in for, or when your client, the person you're trying to close the deal with, just came in and, and got a salad. Um, so you kind of want to get around that by saying, well, you know, this menu looks so delicious. I've never been here before. What do you recommend? And what that does is it kind of lets um, let's it be known what we're going to order, how we're going to eat, and, and the meal and how it's going to flow. Are we going to have cocktails first, then order wine, or what we're going to do? And you don't want to be the guy or gal ordering the most expensive thing or just not eating enough because just a salad doesn't look like you're having a good time either. Uh, that's that's very true. And you've cooked for many dignitaries, including Barack Obama when he was a presidential candidate, Mayor Rahm Emanuel, Michael Bloomberg, Senator Joseph Lieberman, Al Gore, Gorbachev, President Bush, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Steven Spielberg, Senator Hillary Clinton, Ivanka Trump, and many, many others. Has anything about any of those names that I just mentioned surprised you about their eating habits? Um, I I learned a lot of things about people's eating habits, and um, one of the people that you named can only eat soft food because they have bad teeth, <laughs> um, and I don't want to say who that is. <laughs> well, I understand um, there's a chef uh, chef and, and eating uh, privileges uh, that we yeah. wouldn't want to uh, disclose on this program. Right, and um, I fed one uh, former music star um, in a in my New York restaurant, and he let his kids jump up and down on the. Uh, on the bank hats, on the seating. So, you know, you never know what goes in, in a business setting and, and in a restaurant. But I, I think uh, eating is, is such a great way to to break barriers down and to just have a good time and to relax and everyone paces themselves and, you know, you, you don't want to be the first person done eating or the last person. You kind of want to pace it and pay attention to what's going on and just smile and have a good time. Well, I want to get back to the tips in a moment, but uh, I know you are a passionate farmer's market uh, advocate and that goes to uh, a lot about what this show is all about, small business and supporting local economies. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of the things that you've seen and and the people that you've met and, and perhaps why it's important or maybe why it's it's even just a, a, a good idea to, to go shopping at, at a local market like that. Yeah, I, I am passionate about it, and I think a local market – does speak to exactly what is in season, exactly where you are. So if it's, you know, July or almost July in Chicago, we're eating strawberries and broccoli and these gorgeous onions and things you you don't normally see in the grocery store. So you're going to eat a wider variety of what's in season. Um, And the farmers, the reason I like these farmers is you're looking at that 
that chain of, of where the food comes from, and you're directly at the top of it. So you can look the guy in the eye, and he's not spraying his strawberries with every pesticide and herbicide on the planet. And you're, you're making a contact with a human being, and you're feeding your family and those that you love, so you want to make sure the foods are quality and, and the highest level that it possibly can be. And then the food itself is just so much amazing, so much more amazing than what you buy at the grocery store. The berries smell like berries and perfume and jamminess, and they're just so delicious. And you just don't get that when you buy something out of a little plastic container. Uh, very true. Once again, we're chatting with Laura Frankel, a noted chef and the author of many books. Laura, tell us about uh, some of your recent uh, writings and and uh, where they've been published and uh, what is uh, what is mentioned in, in those uh, publications. So um, my two cookbooks, uh, Jewish Slow Cooker and Jewish Cooking for All Seasons, were recently recently republished by a local publisher here in uh, the Chicago area called Agate Publishing, and they're both doing very well. The Slow Cooker book, I think, is probably one of the most versatile books. It's not just for winter when the weather is cold, though that's perfect, and people kind of envision that. But, you know, right now when it's super hot here in Chicago, your slow cooker isn't eating up, heating up your whole house. It's just kind of this self-contained unit and could be cooking you the most amazing brisket to have, like, barbecued brisket sandwiches outside for the upcoming Fourth of July um, holiday or any of your summer dishes. Um, I'm also working on another book that has to do with everything from scratch, no bottles and prepared sauces and stuff. And I think a lot of us have forgotten how to cook from scratch, if we ever really knew. And uh, and I think you lose something when you um, shop out your, your, your food products. When you let somebody else do all the work, you lose that integrity and, and to know where your ingredients come from. Very true. Uh, Laura, your books are available uh, on Amazon. And of course, we'll make sure that we share your website before the end of the segment. Um, but you have three children, uh, and uh, my understanding is that they all love to cook and enjoy great food. Uh, tell us, uh, do you have any differences of opinion when it comes to uh, when it comes to the kitchen with your with the rest of your family? Yeah, we we have our family likes and dislikes, and. Um... You know, one of my, my kids all love my macaroni and cheese, and it's funny because they're all adult kids, but that's kind of a staple and a standard, and we all fight over whether it should have the crispy breadcrumb topping on it. And I vote that it does, and some vote that it doesn't, and we go back and forth, so I've kind of done like a pizza and go half. Um, <laughs> but my kids uh, are food snobs, and I think uh, it, it is definitely I, I turned them that way. So now my, I, I'm on the spot all the time, too. Fantastic. Well, believe it or not, next week is uh, July 4th weekend, and so I just want to leave our listeners with perhaps a little bit of uh, tips and advice from you. Uh, people off likely will be barbecuing or, or grilling, um, but uh, along with the, uh, the meat uh, perhaps comes some side dishes. Any recommendations of what, uh, what some of our listeners can be serving at maybe their July 4th uh, dinner that they might be serving? Yeah, um, I always like to say that when you're serving like a hot entree, to make sure you do one or two cold side dishes. And it makes life so much easier when you're not trying to uh, keep everything hot and at one temperature. And you, you, most kitchens in, in the home are not suited for all of that. So I always like to do cold side dishes. And this time of year is perfect. Do like a great potato salad. So pick up some great potatoes at the farmer's market, and they just taste that much more earthy and creamy and wonderful and make a, a simple, beautiful potato salad and maybe a, a lovely vegetable salad to go with it, and then rock out your brisket or your short ribs or whatever you're making and well, have fun with it. Well, now we understand why you are such an award-winning chef. You've uh, been honored at a number of, uh, uh, of great cooking shows and, and again, award-winning author of many books. Um, Laura, what's the best way for our listeners to find out more about your, your writings as well as learn more about uh, about your, your cooking and, and catering? Uh, my books are available on Amazon, and you can find out more about me at cheflaurascosher.com. Fantastic. And I know you're also available on Facebook and on Twitter, so I encourage our listeners to check that out. And uh, Laura, frankly, we appreciate uh, those tips. And as Laura said, uh, dining and wining and dining is a great uh, great way to close your next business deal and we only talked about the dining piece, but uh, perhaps, Laura, next time we'll talk a little bit about the whining as well. My pleasure. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Laura Frankel, uh, after the break, we are going to be chatting with 
Mike Hale, um, who is a scout executive, uh, we're going to be talking a lot about young leadership. We're going to be talking about uh, cultivating the next generation, and I'm really excited about the topic. So don't touch that dial, Chicago. You're listening to Get Down to Business, the show all about small business jobs and entrepreneurship. You can download podcasts at shalomkline.com. Get Down to Business once again, powered by Tandem HR, your solution center. You can find them online at tandemhr.com. Uh, Mike Hale and Michelle Bauman will join us after the break. Don't touch that dial. Uh. 